29 miles I'm also all right hey guys welcome to our YouTube channel uh, we like to take a special thanks to all our new subscribers all our old subscribers if you ain't already please like and subscribe to our channel uh, we're driving through the Appalachian now we're over in Quarry County headed back into Wayne County beautiful day about 70 degrees here in southeastern Kentucky probably be talking about logging or whatever today we get on the subject of and uh, we've been down Gatlinburg or not Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge to the NASCAR race park for a day and believe me I've never seen that many people in Pigeon Forge in my life uh, it, yeah it was want with people but we spent a day at the NASCAR park or NASCAR go-kart park whatever you want to call it it's pretty fun not too bad expensive like $30 a purse or something uh, unlimited rides of go-karts pretty sore this morning to tell you the truth I am them kids about rolling me deaf I think I outrode the kid though for it over with they're still fun to ride go-karts but uh they've done that come back in stay in the motel run bass pro I guess we're coming on home now then. Yeah, we only about 100, 125 miles from where we live to Pigeon Forge. It ain't too bad. Been down there a lot in my life. We stopped at Bass Pro and got us a helmet and a new fishing reel. I tell you what, guys, that lake down, it's, it's spring weather. Them striper and wall I'll be hitting here for a long on top water. If it, if it stay warm and that lake would go down, they're catching largemouth in there right now. Good large about bass, but it's up high and muddy. I hope we have a warm spring. I tell you what else is coming up too right now. Anytime is dry land fish or morel mushroom. We call them dry land fish, but the real name of them is mushroom. I like eating them things and hunting them. Can't find them like you used to, but I still like to eat them hunting. We got we got a few there below the house or under that walnut tree. But it's a pretty scenic drive across through here. Uh, I thought about shooting a video when we come up by all the stage stage meals and all the tie meals back there next to the railroad tracks. And I did didn't really have time this evening, so I went by them all. And, but uh, where they load the trains and stuff with railroad ties and stuff, and uh, then they got a stage meal over here too. They do wild oak logs. It's almost on the Tennessee border, but. Uh, yeah, it's a, we had a pretty good trip, and nothing really doing a video wise, it just, I couldn't think of nothing other than go-kart riding, I didn't even take the Camry with me, but, had some pretty views over in here, pretty country over in here, I don't know who's asked me about, I've had several ask me about coming over in here, they, Rattlesnake Ridge, and, and, uh, Bell Farm and all them places shooting videos. We're not there, but we're awful close to it. We're on the main road. We probably will a little later on this summer, get a little more leaves on the tree, maybe in the fall do some across through there. But uh, these people have never changed through here. They're about 20 years behind time over here. And then in Cory County, they're way behind time. They still, a lot of old school people over in this country. I always said if you go to Macquarie County, you go back in time about 10 years, 10 to 15 years. Some says 20. Good place to find a lot of old model car parts and stuff. I used to go buy a lot of stuff with log equipment, which is a lot of loggers over here, a lot of dozer parts and stuff. That's like everywhere else, it's changing too. But uh, that last video I done that truck I had was a truck I bought in that picture. When did I buy a truck? Well, I don't know when I bought that truck. I bought a truck out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, it'd been a grain truck on a farm. It had a 14 foot, was it, yeah, 14 foot steel flat on it. It had grain racks on it. It's a one ton truck. And uh, I took the racks off it and had that good steel flat on it. And uh, I don't think somebody changed the motor out of it and put a 400 small block in it. Small block 400. I didn't know what it was when I bought it. I was buying it for 350. And I bought it and drove it down the road and got out. 
got gas look at the harmonic balance or anything. I said, well, it's either a 305 or a 401. And uh, I said, act's too peppy for a 305. So, and, but it wasn't all that bad on gas. It pulled good out on the road, but it's a little, a little hesitant in the hole. It's like 350 had a little more coming up out of the hole than for a small block did. But now, she'd walk on out with you on a load out on the road. But that's probably one of the first loads there. We was finishing up that job down there when I put that load on her. I can't remember exactly how many feet I had on it. It's up around a thousand feet, and that's pallet and tile hogs. I don't think I quite had a thousand feet, but it's pretty close to it. But uh, we had a lot of logs on the little truck because the next job we was going to, it, what, what, the we could, only truck we could get in there to use. We couldn't use a big two-ton truck. He couldn't get them off the road. Well, he could have, but you'd had to sit on, in, a, in a blind curve and loaded off the road, and it's just too dangerous. Or are you a flagman and flag for you? Just too dangerous in that little ton truck. I'd, I'd get two thirds of a load on it while I could the two ton truck. And yeah, uh, we loaded the bar out of that thing. It blow out the tar about every day. I only didn't blow out two on one side. It was all right. But uh, it done good on the road. I didn't like it much on the hill. It's 373 gear. I messed around that truck. I should have kept it. And. Uh, Messed around with a guy bought it for just the motor core at a foreign small block here. It's used oil pretty bad when I got rid of it, but it could have been rebuilt. But uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, pulling wise, 350 is better than a 400 a Chevrolet. And but uh, out on the road, I had to, well, I've got pictures. I'll probably start this one off with the picture of the that uh. John Deere track hole on, track loader on it. I had on it. It, it weighed 12,500 pounds, so that's six and a half ton. Or, but 12,000 and a half. Well, it might be 12,000. That'd be six ton, yeah. 12,000 pounds be six ton. I had it on there, and a lot of them loads of logs was heavier than it. But, uh, a lot of people think you can't move a lot with a ton truck. You can move, you can move a whole lot of timber with one of them if you ain't got too big an operation. One, one two man crew, they work out pretty good. Uh, well, at one time, I forgot to mention the other day, one time I had a short wheelbase ton with a uh, log trailer. Didn't keep it too awful long. I wished I had a. It worked out good. We was in, doing some logging in a field. It worked out good in the field. I like a little gooseneck, 16 foot gooseneck, a tandem trailer. Well, it was a little short wheelbase ton truck, but. Uh, it worked good like that. Lord, yeah, you can haul as much as you could on two-ton with that thing. Easy to load. Didn't have to have, didn't have, to have nothing high to load with. But uh, a ton truck, you didn't have much high to load with. You didn't have a... Uh, well, you didn't have a... I mean, you couldn't get as much out of a ton truck in a week's time. But you could... Hey, we, we weren't running too far behind with it. But I haul them. Monticello, Somerset, I was making a 20, about a 28 mile run with but this level road, wasn't no hills much. But that old 400, it, it, it pulled good on the road or up a, up, up a hill, but just coming up out of the hole or something, taking off, it, it's a little sluggish, but there you got her going, she'd go. The guy bought the truck, he'd give me pretty good, more than I give for the truck, and he just wanted the motor put in a, a race car dirt track car it was a true true four small block it could have come out of that 400 yes it's been a ton truck i never hear one of four small block most of them 350s i was trying to think it's 81 or two models i think it might be 83 i ain't sure they up for us but, but uh now they we haul several thousand feet logs on that thing we cut one 10 acre boundary up there with it that's the one i got it for just 10 acres all they were of it but it, I forget how many, many thousand dollars it was cutting the acres every bit for veneer and timber. Every bit of it was veneer. White oak and uh, chestnut oak. Had some poplar, had some pretty good poplar on it, and uh, sugar tree and stuff like that. Red oak, but it's about all white oak. And, and one reason they couldn't cut it is close to houses, and, and uh, which I didn't cut it all. There was some of it I wouldn't cut. And we had to pull a lot of it the way it was. I left some, I, I couldn't even get it all cut, but uh, it was time consuming, but it's worth the money for one, uh, it's really too much time consuming for a big outfit there before with, 
to move all their equipment in there. They, the guy didn't want no hole cut back in his bank or coming in his driveway. And there was no way a big outfit get on a knuckle boom. And there ain't no way. It just wasn't going to happen. So they, they offered him a lot of money for it. People did, but they couldn't. They, uh, he wouldn't let them in there on with their equipment. And I could get in there with a ton truck and uh, made me a little spot there to back it into the bank or the load. And I, I had just enough room to drag maybe three trees out and saw them up. And uh, usually, if they're big trees, that was your load right there on a ton truck. And uh, track load them, uh, take the track load them back over the bank with them, put them on the truck, go back up the hill and get another. <laughs> But now if you're loading a ton truck, the key to loading a ton truck on logs is uh, on a one ton, make sure you put all the butts on the bottom, all the heavy logs on the bottom, put your little logs in on top. Because like I say, they're not as heavy as spraying and you can't get them topped heavy and they will turn over. But they work perfect for cedar roll. They work better than log truck. Cedar, you can get just as much on ton as you can two ton first feedage on cedar. And you're not gonna burn that much fuel. You're not gonna have that much upkeep. And I, I actually used that truck too on that big, that last big boundary cedar I cut down there, which I could go back and cut it. I, I've still got, the, I've still got it if I wanted to, but it, it just, it wouldn't be worth buying equipment for it down because they just ain't buying enough of it to do anything with. You cut two or three thousand feet a week, be all man can sell if he can sell that. I mean, you couldn't. He couldn't get enough equipment. Me and my brother was talking about it the other day because he's got a ton truck now. We really wasn't needing nothing but an old tractor to, with a front end loader on to get it out. But uh, we got talking about the other day. They just wasn't buying enough of it to, to uh, pay us to do it. So we didn't do it. But yeah, I know the guy told me as long as he's living, he could cut it as we wanted to or however, as he bought it. I told him when I got the cedar, I cut his timber. Well, I cut his softwood. I didn't cut his hardwood. He didn't want his hardwood cut for deer hunting. Now, he had some good timber, too. And, uh, I told him, I said, on this cedar business, I said, he may, we may go for two or three months, and they may shut down for a year and not buy no more. And he said, well, you can cut it as long as, or however they'll sell it, or however they'll buy it do whatever you want to with it or however you want to do it. I worked it about solid about a year there. Well, well, I worked it solid while I was working the, the hardwood out, but I had no uh, Ford pickup truck. It had, a, had the spring built. It was one I delivered wood on all. It was, it was my wood truck, what it was. And all beat up the bed and everything was on it. I've got pictures of it too. I need to stick on here someday to show you guys. It's pretty wild. I took my neighbor over there, built me a set of log bunks for it down in the bed. The bed was, we broke the bed off with loading it with cedar. And uh, we could go back in the woods with it where you couldn't get no equipment, wouldn't have to snake it so far. We'd go back there and load it down. We put 700, 800 feet of cedar on it, which that's not the same with log feet. The cedar measures on a different scale. And uh, we come out of that hollow with it. It stacked up like a log truck on a pickup. It's pretty wild with it. And uh, a little miniature log truck. But boy, he built me a heck of a set of bumps down there in that bed. Oh. And uh, we welded them to the bed sides. And, and they chop your cedar right down in there and stick you some stakes through the top of your standards. And it go right on out with it. Pick up a hauling cedar. We had a lot of people turn their head and look. They go five, six foot on top of the cab with it. Uh, which I was done with the wood business then. I, I, I wore the truck out. I wore the truck out hauling wood with it anyway. But it, we made a lot of money that fall with that fall. You got to buy that cedar good. We really went in after it hard for it. We cut the timber and poplar and stuff as we run into it. But we set it out to the side. Uh, Cause while that cedar was going good, I had my nephew help me and my brother. We we was getting it at while it was hot and uh, we take a ton of truck loading that big pickup load out every every day. And uh, you run about from anywhere from 1,300 to 1,800 feet on a ton truck, and anywhere from 600 to I think 800 something feet the most I ever had on the pick. Cause uh, he's running over 2,000 feet a day, close to 3,000 feet a day. Most, most days, about 3,000 feet a day. So, and 
three hundred dollar thousand. It wasn't too bad today. Didn't have that much in it. And well, we wasn't making a killing, but we was making some money. Three thousand feet, three hundred dollar thousand, be nine hundred dollars a day. Then half of it, we we surviving, but. That was my big boo-boo on that bunch of, was offering him half for it. I shouldn't have done it. I, I could have bought it on a third. Yeah, but uh, most people give half, and I figured somebody else come in there and get it on me if I didn't meet a lot of them's price. But that's the way they do it right here, usually on half. They don't many of it buy on the stump unless you buy land at all. Then these big these big companies that come in here, and lumber companies, stuff come in here and mark it off and cut it but uh no nah, i never did uh i never did buy it on the stump or nothing i never had money buy it on the stump but uh i've cut it where it's been bought on the stump well i was cutting one ball on the stump the last up to uh, to the covid but uh you can uh you can make good money cutting actually as long as you got a good crew working with you, they don't try to work you dead. But, uh, but uh, one crew I had one time there. Well, one crew I worked for one time. I was cutting, trying to cut for two skidder, and it just it was too much. I couldn't do it. Steep ground. But this last time, it just you cut you a good day's cutting, usually six hours, and hardly ever worked eight hours. And go home. I was thinking about around here, it, you wasn't, it wasn't hard pressed to find a timber cutter. That's what, I mean, that's what hurt. You, you just, if you cut by the foot like we did on the, it wasn't, it wouldn't be hard to find one that cut by an hour. It's a lot of them would cut for $10 an hour, you know. I just couldn't do it right now for $10 an hour. Years and years ago, maybe, uh, and you had to compete with them guys too, but like I say, most, most of them around here about, they only run about 50% capacity of loggers. I, a lot of us, a lot of them went out. They just, they went out, they just can't make it. This ain't, uh, ain't moving as much as they was or something. It's just slowed down. But uh, if it shuts completely down around here, it's in bad shape lumber business is cause of the tie mills. The tie mills, you know, all them railroad tracks is going, they gotta have tie logs, but uh, that's what's going real big right now. They still, well, stage logs are still going too, stage white old kids. But uh, I seen over there, they had a mill yard full of them, sawing a lot of it, but making them whiskey barrels. But they, uh, so I cut up to 2017 by myself. And then I went off. Uh, then I started working for others. I think it may be late part of 2017, it was. About two, two about, then we went to Florida for, I wanted to be a, I thought I wanted to be a sea captain. <laughs> I want to go down there. It's always been a dream to go down and, and either cut timber or be a sea captain. It's always been a dream to go out and fish the ocean. That didn't work out. I went down there and done a, I actually ended up doing tree work down there after the hurricane. Um, done a little carpenter work for, I don't know, we wasn't down there long. We moved down there in July of 2018, come back in April 2019. We went there near a year, 10 months probably. Oh, how 10 months out of, since 1998, I didn't log. That's what I was working on. And, uh, well, it it prevented me the opportunity, it gave me the opportunity to go down there, and we wasn't getting enough timber to work, and and uh, it's hard to get work hands and keep them busy, and uh, I was just running out. I just, I was either going to have to go super big or go home because it's coming down the knuckle bones and all that stuff. We was about the only crew left that's still sawing up on the yard and just still a two-man crew. Well, they's some more two-man crew. Well, they's one more crew out there. Well, one or two more other than us. And actually full with just great logs and it full with old pallet wood and stuff. Well, we full pallet logs, but not full with nothing but great. 
not full of white wood and stuff, so it's just getting slow. It's getting hard to find any timber. It's getting hard to make your bills. Well, it's hard to do. If you didn't have no bills, it'd be a different story, but payments come in every week. It's hard to or it's hard to do anything with your work hands. A lot of times make more than I would clear a time of fuel bill and everything out. So 2017, like I say, it's not always 2018. I shut it. We we uh, we got done them last bunch of sold the equipment and uh, paid off what I owed on it and sold chainsaws, sold everything to get out of debt. And uh wandered around there for a month or two and it well I took a couple months to get the equipment sold and everything wound down and went to Florida and found this house down there and ended up going down there and I said I'll just retire on the ocean as a professional fishing like I say it didn't go through I ate a lot of work down there but we just come back when it didn't it's okay but I had to live through that hurricane, boy. That about done us in. And we actually, we went through it, but we wasn't in it. We, well, we went to Dauphin, Alabama, and took refuge in a motel, and it was a Cat 1 when it hit there, but we made it on 231, going we going back towards our house. That coming in, it was probably at about Cat 2 stage then. It's, it was just unbelievable what damage it done down there, so. But it opened up the door for a lot of works. It opened up the door for a lot of crooks and stuff to crook people. But uh, our house, our whole neighborhood wiped out only. But our house was still, the only thing it done is it tore two shingles off and busted one winter. We had a car stayed and went through it. It didn't hurt the car a bit. So we was very blessed and lucky. Very blessed. We don't look good. We blessed. We just demolished the house right beside us. The one on the other side of us too. Actually, there was a tornado spun up out of it right there on our street. You could tell, you could see the path of it. It just laid everything down. Remember my, Hurricane Michael? It, uh, it's, it's awful. But uh, we, we stayed there, I think it was over a month and a half without electric, no water, no nothing. Right there in there is when I should have packed up and come back to Kentucky. But I didn't, which I was working, making good money, but. We hung on out there. It's nice and summer time. I remember Sunday there in January, it'd be 78 degrees a lot of days in January, just like it is here in the spring. But uh, we got back to Kentucky, went right back into the woods where we belonged, I guess. Cutting by the foot. Cutting by the foot. Now, years ago, I've done some jobs by the foot cutting and skidding for sawmills. You know, they go out and mark the timber and you just cut it about a thousand. It used to pay, uh, I can't remember now. What did I get? I wanted to say $160 a thousand straight price. I believe it was $160 a thousand straight price. Cut, snake, all to the mill. Uh, you have to work to make money, but you can make good money at it because, well, that'd be $160. That'd be like three hundred and forty dollars a thousand for the logs if you were selling them straight price because you would be getting half of that money to the landowner and half to you so it, it's a pretty good deal you can make money if you humped at it you have to work at it though some of them jobs we've done there oh god you get a lot you get several thousand feet out by dinner time 12 1 o'clock that's the time we didn't have a big enough truck to actually haul it. I had to, that's the time I was hauling a lot, a lot, a lot of it haul on tandem trucks. To, you had, like I say, you had to move quite a bit of it to make any money. But I've done several jobs like that around years ago, but that kind of kept us going too. But most of you loggers wouldn't, wouldn't do it. And a lot of them would, a lot of them would. A lot of them still does it where you saw mills. They do, they buy it. Um, they buy the land and all most of the time when they die the ox or buy the timber on the stump then pay you so much to cut it and get it out and, and uh, you didn't have to you didn't have to actually pick through it yeah, they actually have it marked you just cut whatever you come to I always started in the back working my way to the front 
unless it's wet or something, I'll work around in the front on you most boundaries if I could, but uh, I never did get in no good walnut or nothing. I've got in several good patches of cherry, but in there was all that high around here. That walnut's got high. We got a walnut mill here in town, but they saw more hardwood than they do walnut. But he pays good for walnut, though. That would have been pretty pretty good view across through there. I know I'd never filmed out through here before. But uh, we come back, I think it, uh, I took about a month off or so and fished there for two May, I guess, of 2019, halfway through June. Then uh, went back at it. Then the pandemic hit, and that, that kind of shut us all down there. But I don't know what they're going to do. They, have, they never, they've never said. I mean, they're still, they're still moving, but they're just buying the, just buying off the local guys. They, they never, never start their equipment back up or nothing. The mill ain't. They're just buying their timber, which their equipment's paid for. And, uh, they had good equipment, that's for sure. But. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good money. Wasn't bad. Sometimes I had to drive a lot. It was six hours a day. That's about all the cutting. Oh, it don't sound like much. That's quite a bit. You, you get the straight cut and not doing nothing but cutting and topping. It's, it's, it's about all a man wants, to tell you the truth. Especially if you're running up and down a mountain. That's, a, that's about how long they work, six hours, sometimes eight. Sometimes they work longer. I'd go on in, I'd have them far ahead of them. They'd set out with a dozer, come through a skitter and get it. You have a little 450 case in there, the boy did. And every time he about fell a tree, he's ready to grab it, drag it out to where the skitter, he'd bunch it three or four up there before the skitter would come along and get it keep rotating you like that, it went good. And uh, just overnight, it just shut down. Just, they lost a lot of their contracts and stuff. And their lumber buys. And didn't want to, didn't want to shut their uh, buyers off that they'd been buying off of for years because everything picked back up when nobody sell them no logs if they done them wrong, you know, so. They shut their own crew down like that. That's the way most mills does. Can't blame them there, because if they started back up, then they wouldn't never, never get nobody selling me in logs, like if they cut them off, like it's a hard time. But yeah, there's, yeah, they're running, they drop down 50%. I don't know what the hold up is. I've never heard nobody say what the big shutdown was. The lumber, I mean, the flooring mills in Somerset are still going. That's what my brother-in-law hauled for was flooring mills. Y'all lumber for them in the sawmill, but they saw all red oak mainly in, in maple. They don't pull much white oak stuff, and what a stage mill that are going. But uh, one of my best friend log buddies logging this mountain here back in the summer, right out here. Well, there's, there's no skier set up right now. Who's it is? He logged this right here. I think he's right here, wasn't it, huh? Yeah, right there. That. Right there, you can see on that banker, he logged it right there and come out that gate right there. You can see where you got them old stumps at. He logged that back in the summer there. You can see the pile of blocks. I hope he could. And uh, I just want a good brown and white oaks. probably left in this country. And I don't know how he got it bought. I actually looked at it two or three times. Me and my uncle looked at it once was going to cut it. And that'd been almost 20 years ago. It's a super boundary timber. And uh, he was having the hardest time there was getting rid of that veneer and white oak. I mean, he even had it on Facebook Marketplace trying to sell it. And uh, I don't know. You know, he got done there. He, he bought another little bad right there, and that's the last thing I hear of him cutting. But he's just running two man crew, too, with just a skitter and dozer and log truck. But uh, yeah, he was trying to sell that veneer on the yard sale side. Did you wake up, Mom? You ain't been asleep that long. Of course, I've been making this video. I don't know. But anyway, guys, 
I guess better stop pissing mama just woke up. We about the Monticello. I hope you kind of enjoyed our little talk. Maybe the ride along was better than the talk. And, and uh, hey, if you ain't already, please like and subscribe to our channel. It sure helps us grow. And uh, we like getting up in the morning time to see who all subscribed to our channel. I try to answer all the comments that I can. If I don't answer you, I've accidentally missed you or something. As soon as I see you, I will answer you or heart you or something. But, guys, I'm going to jump off here and may God bless everybody. We'll catch you on the next video.